In the previous lecture, we have discussed about the bounded buffer problem or the producer-consumer problem, which was a classic problem of synchronization, and we have seen how it was solved using semaphores. So in this lecture, as we continue with this classic problems of synchronization, we will be discussing the next problem, which is the readers-writers problem. So we will be understanding what is this readers-writers problem, and we will be seeing how it can be solved using the semaphores that we have been discussing. So in this readers-writers problem, what we consider is, a database is to be shared among several concurrent processes. So let's say that there is a database which consists of different kind of data, that has to be shared between different processes. Now, some of these processes may want only to read the data, whereas others may want to update, that is to read and write the database. So when we have a database that is shared among different processes, so different processes concurrently may want to read the data or read and write to the data. So there may be some processes that only wants to read. So by only wants to read means they just want to read the data and they don't want to update or modify anything in the data. But there may be also other processes that wants to update the data. So by updating the data, that means they want to read as well as write. That means they want to read and modify the data in the database. So we distinguish between these type of processes by referring to the former as readers and to the later as writers. So, the processes that only wants to read from the database are known as readers and then the processes that want to read and write, they are known as the writers. So, this is what we mean by readers and writers in this readers-writers problem. Alright, so now what is the actual problem in this? Obviously, if two readers access the shared data simultaneously, no adverse effect will result. So, if the shared data is being read by two readers, at the same time, simultaneously, there will be no problem. We know that there is no problem going to occur if two processes are reading the same data because they are not making any changes, they are just reading it. So there will be no problem. However, if a writer and some other thread, either a reader or a writer, access the database simultaneously, chaos may ensue. So what we mean by this is that, if a writer and another process, which could be either a reader or writer, both try to access the file simultaneously, then we could have a big problem. And why is that? That is because when a writer is going to access the database, it means it is going to write something, it is going to make some modification. So at the same time, let's say that if a reader is trying to read, then it is not going to be able to read the exact data because while it is reading, just at that time, the writer is also updating or changing the data. So that could be a problem. And also let's say that a writer is trying to make a modification and at the same time another writer is also trying to access the database. That means even that writer is trying to write something. So both these writers are simultaneously trying to make some changes in the database to the same data which will result in chaos. So this should not be allowed to happen. So that is a problem that we have when one writer and either a reader or writer are simultaneously trying to access the data, then we are going to have problems. So, to ensure that these difficulties do not arise, we require that the writers have exclusive access to the shared database. So, in order to avoid this problem, we need to make sure that writers will have exclusive access. That means when writers are writing something in the database, no reader should be allowed to read and also no other writer should be allowed to write when one writer is writing. So, this synchronization problem is referred to as the readers-writers problem. So, that is what we mean by the readers-writers problem. So, this is a problem of synchronization because here we see that concurrent processes are trying to either read or write data simultaneously. So, if both of them are just reading the data, there is no problem. But when one is writing, if some other process tries to either read or write, we are going to have problems. So, now what we have to see is, using semaphores, can we solve this problem? So, let's see if we can solve this problem using semaphores. So, now we are going to see the solution to the readers writers problem using semaphores. So, here we will make use of two semaphores and an integer variable. So, with the help of two semaphores and one normal integer variable, we will be seeing how we can solve this readers writers problem. So, the first semaphore that we are going to use is a mutex. So, mutex is a binary semaphore which is initialized to 1 and it is used to ensure mutual exclusion when the read count is updated. That is, when any reader enters or exits from the critical section. So, we will be understanding this when we 
also discuss about the read count variable. So read count is a variable that is used to maintain a count of how many readers are trying to read that same data. So whenever the read count variable has to be updated, we will be making use of a mutex semaphore which will ensure mutual exclusion when the read count is updated. So when read count is updated, that means we should preserve mutual exclusion. So no two processes try to modify the read count at the same time. That is why we are going to make use of this mutex semaphore. And secondly, we are going to use a semaphore called WRT. Let's just call it right, which is a semaphore that is also initialized to one. And it is common to both the reader and the writer processes. So this WRT or write is a semaphore which is initialized to one and it is going to be shared between the reader and the writer processes and it will take care of the writing. So when we see the code, we'll be understanding how it works. So just remember that the two semaphores that we are going to use are mutex and the WRT, which we'll be calling it right for easy understanding. And finally, we have an integer variable called read count. So keep in mind that this read count is not a semaphore. It is just a normal integer variable and it is initialized to zero and it keeps track of how many processes are currently reading the object. So read count is a variable that will keep account of how many readers are reading the same data. So if there is only one reader, the read count variable will be equal to one. If there are two, read count equal to two. And if there are no readers, then read count is equal to zero. And remember that read count is also initialized to zero. Mutex and WRT are initialized to one and read count is initialized to zero. So keep in mind about these two semaphores and the integer variable. So using this, let's see how we design the code of the writer and the reader processes. So first of all, we'll be seeing the code of the writer process. So the writer process are the process that writes or updates the data. So here we have a do while loop and inside this do while loop here, the writer is going to request for the critical section. So here it performs a wait operation on the write semaphore. So what will happen when it performs a wait operation on the write semaphore? So what will happen is if this write semaphore is not being held or used by any other processes, then the writer will get access to it and it will perform the write operation on the database. And while it is writing, since this write semaphore is being held by the writer process, the readers or other writers will not be able to write or read anything from the database because this is going to be shared between the readers and writer as I already told you. So when it is held by the writer process, the reader cannot read or even other writers cannot write to the database. So the writer process will take hold of this. It will perform the write and after it performs the write, it will leave the critical section by signaling the write variable. So when it signals a write variable, it means that it is releasing the write variable now. So when it releases the write variable, the readers could take it and use it for reading or other writers could take it and use it for writing. So this is the simple code of the writer process. So we see that the main important thing here is it gets hold of the write semaphore, which ensures that when the writer is writing something, the database will not be disturbed by either readers or other writers. All right, now let's see the code of the reader process. So here is the code of the reader process. It is a bit long compared to the writer process, but let's try to understand this. It's not difficult. Let's see, here also we have a do while loop. So inside this do while loop, when a reader wants to read something, what will it do? It will perform a wait operation on the mutex semaphore. So mutex is also another semaphore. And I told you that mutex is used in order to acquire a lock when the read count variable is updated. So this is the read count variable which I was talking about. So whenever this read count variable has to be updated, the reader will acquire this mutex so that no two processes will try to modify the read count variable at the same time. All right, so the reader process will acquire the mutex and when it is going to read, it will increment the value of the read count variable. Why? Because this particular reader is now going to read and it has to say that, yes, I am coming to read. So increment the count of read count. So initially, if it was zero, it will be incremented and it will be equal to one. So the number of readers has now increased by one. So then here we have an if condition which says if read count equal to one. So what does this if condition imply? If read count equal to one means there is at least one reader that is trying to read from the database. 
there is at least one reader present. So when there is a reader process that is reading, we should not allow the writer to come and modify it. So in this readers writers problem, there are different variations where they may be differently defined based on the priority that is given either to the reader or the writer. So in this example that we are discussing now, let's say that we are giving priority to the reader. So here, if at least one reader is present, we should not allow the writer to come and modify anything until and unless the reader finishes its reading. So if read count equal to one, wait WRT. That means it will acquire the right semaphore. So when it acquires the right semaphore, what will happen? The right semaphore is now with the reader process. And when it is with the reader process, even if a writer tries to write, it will not be able to get this write semaphore. As I told you, write is shared between reader and writer. So when we see that when a writer tries to write something, it is also going to try to get hold of the write semaphore here. But if it is already held by the reader process here, the writer will not be able to get it and hence it will not be able to write. So this ensures that no writer can enter if there is even one reader present. Okay. And after this, it signals the mutex semaphore. So where is the mutex semaphore? Here we saw that the wait operation was performed on the mutex semaphore before the read count was updated. Now this reader is signaling the mutex. That means it is releasing that mutex semaphore, which implies that other readers can enter while this current reader is inside the critical section. So I already told you that if there are two or more readers, there are no problem. We can allow any number of readers to read the data at the same time. So this reader is now saying that if there are any other readers who wants to read, they are free to come inside and read from the database. So that is why it does this signal of the mutex because it will release the mutex. And by releasing the mutex, if there is other reader wants to read, it will be able to come and increment the read count and then enter the database and start reading. So that is why this signaling of mutex is used here. All right. Now, after that, the current reader performs a reading here. The reading operation is performed here. And let's say that it finished reading. Now, when it finishes reading, what happens? It has to exit and it has to go out. But before it goes out, it has to decrement the value of the read count variable because a reader is now leaving. So the read count variable has to now decrease, which implies that there is one reader less now. So it has to modify this read count variable and decrease it. So when it has to modify this, I told you it always has to acquire this mutex in order to modify the read count variable. So again, it does a wait operation on the mutex. And once it gets that, it will decrement the value of the read count, which implies that the reader wants to leave and it will leave the critical section. And now here it says that if read count equal to equal to zero. So what does it imply? It implies that no reader is left in the critical section. So when all readers completed reading, what will they do? Whenever they exit, they will be decrementing this read count variable and there will be a time when there are no more readers left. So at that time, the read count variable will be equal to zero. So when read count variable is equal to zero, we are going to signal the right semaphore, which implies that a writer can enter. So when we signal this right semaphore, what happens? The right semaphore will be released by this reader processes. And hence, it will be available for a writer if they want to acquire it. So that is what we mean by signaling of write. So it means writer can enter if they want to enter. So if writer wants to enter, it will now acquire it here and enter. And also it will signal the mutex because here the mutex was held when it was trying to decrement this read count. So it has to also free the mutex. So the signaling of the mutex is done and hence the reader leaves. So this is the code for the reader process. It may look long, but if you just analyze it carefully, we can know that it is not difficult. It is easy to understand. So here again, what were the problems we had? The problems were that when a writer is writing, no other reader or writer must be able to access the database. So we see that that problem is solved here by using this write semaphore. The write semaphore, when it is held by one of the writers, no reader can read, no other writers can write because 
this is a shared semaphore and only the process who is having the hold of the right semaphore can access the database so that problem is solved and also we see that when the reader is reading we allow other readers to read but we don't allow the writer to come and write at the same time when a reader is currently reading something from the database so this is an example where the priority is given to the reader because when the reader is reading the writer cannot come and preempt it and the writer cannot come and disturb it so this is an example of how the readers writers problem is solved using semaphores so we made use of two semaphores one is the write semaphore and another one is a mutex semaphore and this read count was a normal variable that we used so this is how the readers writers problem is solved using semaphores so i hope this was clear to you thank you for watching and see you in the next one